God, I need a break from this. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world. So, hey, all of you all. Um, so before you get too concerned, I'm gonna just let you guys know straight out of the gun. Nothing bad has happened. I am not like leaving YouTube, even though I've gotten some some requests and some suggestions from the comment section that I should stop making videos immediately. But that's what it is. That's fine. Um, and thank you all for for the love and attention. But no, I am gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna need to take a little bit of break because you guys, my show. For all intents and purposes, my show opens tomorrow, <laughs> and so I'm just, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of things that need my attention, a lot of things that need to be tweaked, and taking, you know, the the hours out of my day, you know, making the video and editing the video and posting the video, you know, I'm not going to say that they take hours and hours and hours, but if I'm going to talk about anything, there's a certain amount of research that has to go into that, and I ain't got time for that, y'all. I ain't got time for that. So before we get too far into that, I want you guys to know that I am drinking, this is Tulsi, Tulsi, and it's um, jasmine and holy basil. And I didn't know much, but it's a stress relieving and enchanting caffeine free certified organic tea. And it's the company I believe is Organic India. I don't know if you can see it. Organic India. And they, um, they are, they do, they're fair trade and they tend to uh, focus on sustainability. Um, you can go to their website, organicindia.com, if you want to learn a little bit more. But yeah, this is the jasmine tea. So that's what I'm having this morning um, with you all. And I'm going to say, oh, I'm having it in, by the way, I'm having it in this cup that says Riot Act. It actually says it on both sides. So the Riot Act was a program that. Oh my goodness, my my theater company did, I want to say, almost 10 years ago. And it was done with the Center for Court Innovations, which is the same organization that runs the peacemaking program that I'm part of. And the idea behind this program is it brought teenagers from Red Hook, which is where I was living at the time, together with police officers to do improvisation. Now, I don't know if that might sound random to people, but um, as you know, there was a huge problem with police community relations that went back a few years where there was uh, the stop question and frisk policy that was disproportionately uh, disproportionately affecting, you know, black and brown people in New York City um, to the, it got close to the tune of a million individuals per year and 90% of them were people who were absolutely innocent and 90% of those individuals were um, were uh, black and Latino. And so the program was pretty successful. What ended up being the real issue is that police officer schedules are just too wacky. So um, it meant that they couldn't be quite as reliable as they needed to be for the kids to depend on them. And the last thing that you would want is to have a program that's supposed to strengthen relationships b between, you know, people on the police force and people in the community that would leave some kids feeling like bad, like they, they, they didn't care. But there were some officers who were involved in the program who I still have relationships with who I just absolutely have come to, you know, I, people that I truly love. Um, you know, there were some officers who started question, questioning whether or not they wanted to continue being police officers. Um, there were strange occurrences. I remember, um, uh, particularly in one case, there was an officer who was, you know, in, who came in with their, um, who came in with their, um, their firearm on. And it was just a little bit weird to be doing something in an anti-oppression environment where someone was carrying a, a weapon. Um, there were people who had mixed feelings about the program. I myself had mixed feelings about the. Pro I think everybody had mixed feelings about the program because it was a little bit like you know you're you're cooperating with the state for this thing. But the reality was there were officers who were then building relationships with young people in that community that would then stand a chance. Um, in not being harassed or at least have a name that they could say if they were being harassed. The real solution to the problem is like addressing the policy, right? Addressing the law so that no one is entitled to do what officers 
sometimes, you know, sometimes do to young people, but they do it because the policy works in their favor. So, um, so yeah, that was called um, Riot Act. We also called it the Police Teen Theater uh, Program. And I believe it was inspired by a program, uh, I believe the program was called Live Bait, and I believe that came out of, maybe it came out of Chicago? Um, but you can look at, you can look up, you know, live bait and see if, um, you can learn a little bit more about that. Maybe I'll look it up and post it in the description box below. So you guys, um, so, uh, Macron, uh, defeated Le Pen. So now instead of having an openly, you know, racist and fascist president, um, you know, France is dealing with, you know, a you know, neoliberal businessman. I don't know. I'm I, I, I'm guessing that a neoliberal businessman is 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 you know a better choice than the openly racist fascist. Unless, of course, you know it, de it depends on what the it depends, right? It all depends. Just because the person has you know particular politics doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to turn around and you know, you know, raid all the coffers, right, and leave uh, France in horrible shape. Um, their, uh, privileged vegan made a video about, uh, about, uh, Macron, uh, a few, uh, I think last week. And so I'll post a link to that video, or maybe I'll make a suggestion and put it up there, I guess. Um, it may not happen today, but eventually the, it'll be up there. So when you watch this video, you'll be able to click and go right to a uh, privileged vegans video. So yeah. Um, the Senate, as far as I know, st has still has not passed the bill. If anybody knows, if anybody has an update on whether or not the Senate has passed in the U.S., has passed the, the repeal, replace the Affordable Hair Health Care Act bill, please do, you know, let me know. Um, so, uh, one last thing before I go until, you know, I'm, I'll be back on Sunday with the live stream, but yeah, until I am not doing any daily vlogs for the rest of the week. Um, someone made, a, someone named, uh, someone who goes by the handle Tailed, Tailed Feature made a response to my questions for anti-SJW's video. And it was um, brought to my attention by a friend who I didn't even know was following this channel. And so they sent it to me last night and I watched it. And it was interesting. First of all, um, you know, Tailed Feature, thank you for taking the time to respond to some of those questions. Um, you know, you know, thank you for taking the time to respond to some of those questions. What I walked away with was what I tend to walk away with from these conversations, regardless of the valid points that are made, I'm still concerned with the idea that somehow social justice itself is getting a bad name because of people behaving badly um, in the name of social justice. And it makes me think immediately of people in domestic relationships where they are being abused. And the partner, you know, you know, love gets thrown around, right? The per it's, you know, but this person loves me, right? This is done out of love. And you almost want to, you know, would you call, you know, what is the name for people who love, to, you know, who love too much or who love, who are, who are, you know, we don't call people in abusive relationships, you know, love warriors, right? We don't, we don't associate the concept of love with that negative behavior. We on the outside can recognize that that is simply an abusive person taking advantage of their power in a relationship where their partner isn't able to get out, that their partner is trapped somehow. And again, so love doesn't get a bad name because of the huge number of abusive relationships that exist. In fact, relationships don't get a bad name because of abuse that happens within relationships. So I'm not sure how social justice itself gets a bad name simply because there are people behaving badly. I think we just have to get much better at calling out the behavior and describing that behavior and naming that behavior for what it is. So if there is someone who is within the social justice movement who is trying to use 
social justice to, in fact, um, censor people or discriminate against people, then let's call them out for discrimination. And let's call them bigots, right? And, I, you know, call, call them racist, whatever. Call, call things out for what they are. And if someone tries to beat you over the head with social justice, you just say, no, that's not social justice. Um, also, there seems to be this um, general assumption that some people think of social justice as um, equality of, I don't even know what it is. I can't even think of what the term they're using, but quality of outcome, quality of outcome. What does a quality of outcome even mean? I don't know what that means. I understand equality of opportunity. Equality of opportunity as social justice. And that's the opportunity to breathe fresh air, to live, to take care of oneself, right? So I don't, I don't understand how equality of opportunity gets conflated with equality of outcomes. And someone, please, please describe for me what the quality of outcomes even looks like, because I don't think it's possible. Everyone having the same life, that's fascism. That's fascism. When I hear that, it just sounds to me like fascism. That might not be what people intend when they say quality of outcomes. And so I also wanna know from folks who consider themselves part of the social justice community, do you embrace the notion of, of equality of outcomes? And if you do, how do you propose that that might be achieved? So, um, yeah, entailed features video, you know, there are some aspects of it that made me feel a little bit like, mm, I don't know, you know, like I'm, you know, my style is that I sit here and I, you know, and I rattle off and, you know, I, um, and I think, and I have to stop and think cause I'm putting these thoughts together in real time. <laughs> you know, I'm doing this in with you in real time and hopefully I do it you know, well enough that it doesn't make you all spend most of the time in these videos, you know, biting your nails or like, you know, fast forwarding through the dull parts, whatever. Um, and if I do that, let me know. Oh, definitely let me know. But, um, you know, I, 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 you know, so I certainly, I certainly don't, I don't, my, my goal is not to bore you all to tears, but I do, you know, again, these videos tend to be, I, uh, especially these unedited videos. And that's, I've been doing an unedited video pretty much every day for the past, you know, three, three weeks, um, three weeks, just kind of giving this a try as a format. And the tea obviously is, is, is a new thing. So, um, I don't know if there's much more. I'm going to try to post some videos of, I've taken a lot of footage. There's actually going to be a special, there's gonna be a Brooklyn, um, you know, there's a, there's a Brooklyn uh, television station called Brick and they're doing a, uh, you know, a feature on the show and on my theater company. Uh, that's probably not going to happen until after the show. We have, you know, a, a video crew that's coming in to make a video of the show. So I might make that available, but I might, that might be a special thing because it's going to take some work and it's basically going to mean that there are people who are going to get to experience the show. You know, I would, I might put it up on Patreon. I might put that on my Patreon and, you know, consider that, you know, bonus content or what have you, because it took a lot to produce this show. It took a lot to produce this show. Um, you know, that's it. I really do want to remain open. I think I'm going to be coming um, back next week with um, a series of videos around identity politics and the usefulness of identity politics. Um, and that's coming a little bit out of the videos that I've been making about gender, uh, again, I, there are people who know a lot more about gender and also about sex as well than, um, you know, as in like the biological sex, which I think is being gendered in a way that is completely unnecessary to talk about those functions. Um, since there are people who identify as different genders who, who take on those, those responsibilities in our society. Um, so yeah, yeah. I think that's all I have to say. I, I guess I'm going to keep this short. I've got a lot of stuff to do today. Look for, uh, I'm going to try to do a little kind of a commercial for the show that I'll be posting. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so look for that. If you happen to be in the Brooklyn area or New Jersey or Connecticut and you wanna come on down and catch the show, there's a free preview tomorrow, that's Wednesday, the 10th of May, and then the show is gonna be running from the 11th May through the 14th with shows uh, every evening, or at least um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evening, and then uh, some matinees on Saturday and Sunday. I'll leave a link to where you can get tickets if you are local, or you know, if you're not and you just wanna support the work that the company does, you can also go and make a donation. I've said enough. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it, share, Comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself.